Today I'm talking about equine DSLD, and that stands for a degenerative suspensory ligament disease in horses, but also goes by ESPA, which is equine systemic protoglycan accumulation. And what it is, is a systemic disorder of the connective tissue of the horse. And it's pretty much just too much of a good thing. So it occurs when there's an abnormal accumulation of protoglycans between the fibers of the, of the affected tissue. And then protoglycans are sugar protein complexes, which are normally found in between the cells and they provide the structure for the, like, the suspensory ligament. And a little bit of history on DSLD is about three decades ago, um, Peruvian, Paso, Peruvian Paso owners noticed that their horses were breaking down between the ages of seven and 15 years old, and they noticed it a lot in the hind ends. And as these horses aged, it was their hind ends were just dropping, so their fetlocks were dropping lower than what they were supposed to be, and they'd become detrimentally lame, and then they had to euthanize them. So as time went on and this became more known and horse owners were talking to each other, they realized that this is affecting more than one breed. So they realized it affects more than the Peruvian passes, it affects Paso crosses, Arabians, um, thoroughbreds, quarter horses, like all kinds of breeds, even the warm bloods. And there's no exact cause right now. A lot of scientists believe that it could be a genetic factor or an environmental factor. They're still trying to determine what is causing this. <clears throat> Clinical signs are obviously the fetlocks dropping, um, which is, if you don't know what a fetlock is, it's pretty much the ankle of the horse, and it will drop really low to the ground, and you can really see it when the horse steps. You can also tell by the hocks and stifles straightening out, and then they have a hard time standing on that leg if you're picking up the opposite leg because of the excruciating pain. And then sometimes uh, when you feel the affected leg, you can feel hardening on the suspensory ligaments. And then it also always leads to persistent lameness. And is it always the hind legs? It's like 90% okay, of the Okay, very legs. high percentage yeah, in the it's back. It's very, like it's occasionally in the front legs, mm -hmm. but it's usually in the hind legs. Okay. And then this is the video. Okay. So in this video, it's a Peruvian Paso, and when they're affected, they really don't want to stand. So the owner is, is um, egging them on to stand, and if you watch them walk, he does not want to walk, and you just watch his fetlock, the hind and fetlocks, they drop, and he's very oh, wow, stiff. Look at that. They almost touch the ground. Now, can you pause it and point out that yeah. dropped fetlock for people that wouldn't know? I what have the... a picture too. So okay, but like that was back. a good example. Back a little bit. Back here. Do you need the sound at all or no? No. Okay. It's just her clucking at him. Okay. So when he steps. Mm -hmm. Just real soon a now. Bit. Mm, almost there. Oh. Ooh, his tail. Yep, there it is. There. Okay, right, right there. there. Look at that. It should not be that low to the yeah. ground. It should be probably right here. Mm -hmm. The bottom mm -hmm. should be where my mouse is. Yep. So they really don't want to work. It gave it's a excruciating pain. Mm -hmm. And then a lame horse is no, of no use to anybody. No, they once they become super lame, they end up euthanizing. Mm -hmm. Is it this one? Current slide. And then this is a picture. So I actually own a horse. I own a standard bred who's 14 years old. And two years ago, he was diagnosed with DSLD. So this is a picture of his left hind leg. Okay. And as you can tell, like you can see the swelling here as compared to a normal leg. It's very smooth. It's a very obtuse angle as his is more of a right angle. Mm -hmm. and, and no, he's not as bad as the, the video. No, he's not as bad right now. He's sound. He's oh, on, okay. um, as we get to treatments, he's on some of the treatments going on and pretty much until he gets to that point where he tells me re he's just retired and living a bad, happy mm -hmm. retired life. Mm -hmm. Treatments, uh, right now there's no cure. The end is euthanasia once it gets to a really painful point. Wow. But when they get to a point where like 
they're not in a lot of pain, but you can't ride them. You can do some special things if they're like a heart horse and you want to keep them around like my horse. You can do special shoeing, which is this, and it's an extended heel. And it will decrease pain and pressure on the knees. And then there's bandaging, and this is an example of like a compression sock mm -hmm. you can put on. Mm -hmm. And it helps uh, with the swelling and just blood flow. You can do, um, obviously, reduction of exercise. Most of them get retired. And then there's a bunch of joint supplements out on the market, which is like <laughs> MSM, glucosamine. Um, I do yucca root because it's safer on um, their stomach and causes less ulcers. And then for more severe cases, especially in Indiana winters where the ground's really hard, you can do uh, more of a, like, Revacox, which is like, a very strong like acetaminophen very strong instead of like a supplement so mm -hmm. it's like a anti-inflammatory right now has there been some research on those uh, the supplements you know what I mean there's been some research um, there's not a lot a lot of people don't want to get into DSLD because the people who get to research there's just not a lot of outturn like they always end up just with euthanasia, so there's not a lot of research okay. with these supplements with euthanate or with a DSLD. Oh, okay. But these are very popular for any kind of horse, like senior horses, horses in work. So they have, I don't know, this is like one you can get tractor supply, but I like to stick to the more, I guess, herbal mm -hmm. because of the ulcers and stuff that mm -hmm. I've seen okay. other ones can do. And then on the environmental aspect, since we're not sure like what causes it, you can do a lot to help them by improving the environment. And so you can do uh, rubber matting and extra bedding in the stalls, which is right here. This is really thick rubber matting. And then on top of that, you would see like fluffy pine shavings on top, which would be really thick compared to your normal horse to keep everything nice and soft for them if they're stalled. And then when they are stalled during like the bad weather, you need to come and hand walk them. So those uh, protoglycans, when they like store up in their legs, it causes a lot of swelling. So you need to give them time to like let it move around and stretch out. And that comes to my second point. You want as much turnout as possible, which would be like large turnout, uh, flat, dry spaces, um, soft, and then avoid gravel. So that's why I put mm -hmm. this. When yeah. it gets like this, you don't want to put that horse out there because they're susceptible to slipping and they already have a weak suspensory ligament. So that just means it will tear very easily if they fall over. So you want a pasture kind of like this. Mm -hmm. And then obviously you have to avoid sharp turns, narrow spaces, and just keep everything nice and gentle for these horses. And then this is just an interesting thing I wanted to add on. You can have a trauma which looks like DSLD, but it's really not because it can uh, improve. Um, it's an, an acute onset instead of a gradual onset, which is um, DSLD, it's very gradual. And so this is just very interesting that some people do mistake trauma to DSLD when DSLD is actually very different. Mm -hmm. So I just thought that mm -hmm. was an interesting It makes a good point because if it's traumatic, or an injury, it can resolve itself and yes. come back to normal. There's also, like, I found a picture. I couldn't find much behind the picture, but when I was looking for pictures, there was, like, a horse that looked like DSLD, mm -hmm. but they were able to do a surgery and fix the suspensory ligament. But with DSLD, there's no surgeries out there. So there is no surgery with DSLD. There's no surgeries. You can't that. do anything. It's just you. they have to wait it out until it gets really bad for mm -hmm. you to mm -hmm. put them down. Right. And these are my more excited. Okay.